Well, hi there. Chris here again with another video for you on the bench with more vintage Seagate hard drives. Today we're taking a look at the ST225. And dare I say, this is one of the greatest hard drives of all time. Well, I have four examples for you here today to look at a couple of different scenarios and how you might set these up to work in your vintage systems. So, with these four drives on the bench, let's get started. So here's our test board. This is an IBM XT original 640K motherboard and it has the IBM branded Intel 8088 CPU awesome little find here. It's a little dusty but we're gonna hook it up with this you know I've been trying to narrate this dang video now that's a VGA card and I'm gonna stick it in. Hey we got a drive it's the Average Allen what a cool drive it's an ST225 20 megabyte MFM drive it looks like all the others and this one is about as average as they come. I'm going to spin around there. Look, the sticker has nothing on it. It was a clean, perfect drive from the factory, which was awesome back in the day. This is a controller. WDXT Gen 2 Plus MFM controller from Western Digital. So let's go ahead and spin this thing up and see what happens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a nice beep. Alright, so there's some sort of conflict going on with the video card. We've also got a 601 error, and that's because, hey, I forgot the floppy drive. Alright, check that out. There's a floppy controller. Now that we've booted up off of a floppy, we'll go ahead and begin a low-level format. So G equals C800 colon 5. This is the Western Digital Super BIOS 2 formatter utility. We'll use the default interleave of 3. Yes, we are dynamically configuring the drive and I fat finger it there. So you have to write out the parameter string and it gives you each of the parameters there. So this is the parameter string that we need for an ST225 and we will format it you can see here during the format the light is lit up green and after the format I launched speed store and I like to give these drives a seek test and really, it gives the head positioning motor some exercise. Also verifies for us that the positioning is correct with our new low-level format. After that, I went ahead and ran the Speed Store media analysis. And it does pattern testing with a sequence of different patterns. And it collects up a map of error uh, locations on the platters. And we'll see that here when this one's done. That this drive had quite a few errors, but still really not too bad. Uh, that's pretty good for these drives. And totally within the range of uh, realistic uh, things, yeah. So we'll go ahead and create partitions on this and see what happens. As it formats, we're going to find out how much of it's good and how much of it's bad. Now, I didn't film it all the way to the end there, but we see after a reboot, I had already put the sys to this thing and copied some files to it. Hey, and we still got 20 megabytes left, so this is a good drive. So on to number two. This is a drive that uh, maybe about two months ago I had converted from SCSI, the ST225N, 
to MFM format. And I did that by swapping in a regular ST225 control board. Now this, this drive is already formatted. It was using uh, the WD1002A controller, which is right there. And so uh, we're going to get this hooked up and boot it. That beep is wonderful. I think I like the beep more than the sound of the drive, honestly. Okay, so this thing booted up fine. It took a second to initialize. And I went ahead and ran the seek test on it here. And this is to exercise the heads and try to get it to warm up. And we see there that the seek test passed no problem. And so this drive has retained its format for a couple months. And so I wanted to reinitialize it. And we see here that we ended up with some bad tracks. Not as many as the average Allen. But I went ahead and this time I went to mark these tracks. And you hear the drive micro-stepping there. It takes a minute to do that. But when it's complete, we could see here that I had uh, 21 megabytes with 400k in bad, uh, bad blocks. So that's not bad. So drive number three. We're going to go large on this one. This is an ST225. And I'm going to show you how to get more capacity out of it. So this is an IBM uh, OEM drive, type 2, has all the stickers. Oh yeah. So that initialized and it did so right around 200k on the memory count. For that authentic vintage computer experience, will we make it to 640k? That was the thing, every time you turned on your computer, like, will it make it? Yes! It made it! 640k. So, on this drive, to be different, let's use Spinrite. So I'm going to run the uh, quick analysis here on this. And we'll watch how our track map turns out. And we see that towards the first part of the drive, we have some bad spots, but really the majority of the drive is, is nice and clean and good. And so I have an idea for this one. And I want to reformat it using an RLL controller. So if we treat this drive as though it's an ST238R, we should be able to get 32 megabytes out of it. So here is the Western Digital RLL controller I'm using. G equals C800 colon 5. The Super BIOS formatter Rev 2.4 so we'll use the default interleave of 4 and we're gonna enter the parameter string here for the ST238R which is the same geometry as the ST225 with a different parameter for the pre-comp cylinder so let's go ahead and format this one And we're going to use DOS F disk to create our partition this time. I'm going to make one partition to cover all of the space on the drive. And the drive is doing some micro stepping there. It 
Still thinking about it. You will get these differences in behavior depending on the combo between your drive and your controller. So with the partition created and a fresh reboot, we're going to go ahead and format that drive using the DOS format command. With the S switch, it will also transfer the system on there for us. And that clunk you just heard is the head repositioning and clunking into the end stop, but it did format properly. And when I gave it a valid volume label, we can see here that our format was successful. So when I ran it back in spin right again, we see the same bad areas towards the first part of the drive that we already knew about. And of course, the rest of the drive still showing as good. So what I did, I had an idea. If we mark the cylinders that we know are good, so we have a block here in the beginning, and really the rest of the drive there, we can make two partitions, a C drive as a boot drive, and D as a larger drive, to put all of our stuff. So, in Speed Store, I went in there and deleted that DOS partition we created. I'm going to use Speed Store's ability to create partitions by cylinder. So here in that first block, I'm going from cylinder 11 to 25. And those numbers I scouted out from the spin right log. That got us a 700K partition in that first part of the drive and then we will set up our D partition. We're going to go from cylinder 77 to the end of the drive and we got 28 and a half megabytes from it there. So let's do the DOS format here using uh, Speed Store. The first one done and on to the second. And yeah, uh, after that was done, I copied some files, transferred the system, I booted up, and yeah, we've got, uh, looks like, still over 600k free on the first partition, and over 28 megabytes available on the second partition. So we did pretty good on that. Now, there is a question about whether or not the RLL format will last long on an MFM rated drive. The thing you have to know is that the drives are physically the same, except there's a quality control variant between the two. And RLL drives are simply higher quality. So we're going to use this drive to uh, test that out, and we're going to see in a few months where it's at. But I think it's going to turn out pretty good because, well, a couple months ago, six months ago now, I had another one that I had set up to test like this. So here I am running the seek test out of Speed Store again to get this drive exercised and warmed up. But you can see here that we do have some areas of concern. The B's we knew about, but the C's and the U's are new areas that could possibly indicate a degrading format. But we're going to see how that drive does in another six months. So number four, half as good. So here's a 225 with an interesting failure. This is an IBM branded uh, OEM drive. Came out of a 286 uh, XT system. And head 0 and 1 work, but head 2 and 3 don't. So essentially this drive is a uh, ST213 equivalent. So it would be a 10 megabyte version, uh, since we're only using one platter. Now we're still hooked up to the RLL controller, right? 
And, but I'm gonna give it the parameters here for an ST213. And we will low level format it that way. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna let us use the first platter with head zero and one. And hopefully, yeah, we see an error there. That's because I actually messed the one up I was filming. I didn't have it hooked up right, but I was successful. And we got 16 megabytes out of that one platter using the RLL controller. Now, if we were doing this with an MFM controller, we would get the 10 megabytes. RLL gives us the 16 megabytes. And with a low level scan of that using Spinrite, we see that we had two spots there noted in the file system format. So, yeah, 16 megs out of one platter, half of an ST225. That's pretty good. Spin it down here. And I like to listen to see if there's any squeal. And that one spins down nice and quiet. Now, this one is a preview of a future video. It's not quiet. Ouch. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's heads to platter. Well, we'll look at that one another time soon. Thanks for coming along. Appreciate you being on the ride today as we looked at these ST225s. Perhaps the greatest drive of all time. If you have any questions and need help getting your drive up and running, feel free to ask me. Just hit me up in the comments here and we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.